So peace. I see you read the Bible all the time. Why? Great question. Well, in the Bible, there are many different reasons why people read the Bible. But one of my goals is to get into the kingdom of heaven. The Bible speaks about a place and a space called the kingdom of heaven. So when you hear and you see people say that they read the Bible and you ask them well, why, they have no clue or they give you. But the Bible itself tells you to seek the kingdom of heaven and the farm. So that's the goal, you know, because I exist in the kingdom of hell right now. This is hell. This country, this world, this culture, uh, the food that I eat, the air that I breathe, my thought structure is completely opposite of a peaceful or a spiritual place. So the Bible now helps me to see where I would like to get to. That's an amazing response. I got another one for you. So what and where is the kingdom of heaven? So the kingdom of heaven, biblically, so first you must understand what the word heaven means. The word heaven means high or magnanimous or glorious or majestic. Someone that, so if you take, the, if, if you take Michael Jordan, when Michael Jordan had won his six basketball championships, he was in heaven. He could have did anything. You understand what I'm saying? He could have did anything. So he was in a glorious state. When Donald Trump won the presidency, he was in heaven. He could have did anything. He was in a glorious state. So when you're in heaven, you're high. You're elevated. So the kingdom of heaven now is going to be upon the planet Earth. Okay? And being upon the planet Earth, um, you're also going to, whoever makes it into the kingdom of heaven is going to be translated, okay, meaning that their bodies is going to change, their bodies is going to go physically more, spiritually, their spirit is going to be on top, more into the godlike force that is within them that has been shut off. The godlike spirit that is in us has been shut off. That's why we elevate or we deal on low level frequencies right now. So now in the kingdom of heaven, that's what's going to happen. Hmm. Awesome. So, my third question. Who shall bring this kingdom and when? Okay, so who shall bring this kingdom is being called the Christ. And now the word the Christ, or Jesus the Christ, means anointed Savior. Jesus the Christ is the sacrificial lamb, or what is called the Son of God, that came down from heaven to beat Satan upon the planet Earth. This being called Satan runs this entire planet. That's why America is called USA, under Satan's authority. Okay, so under Satan's authority, she, America, and her principalities and her government gets their power from Satan. So Christ had to come down upon the earth for him to defeat Satan. That was the first level. The second level now, the change, when he comes back now, he's going to take down all the nations of the world. There's going to be a third world war, which is called the third world war, which is going to happen in the valley of Jehoshaphat. When you go into the book of uh, Hosea and when you go into Revelation, the 19th chapter, you're going to see the nations come together for a third world war. Okay? And he's going to step back, this being called the Christ. So if you don't know who the Christ is, all you got to do is go to the book of Revelation, the first chapter, the 14 and 15 verse. It's going to describe him to you. And if you go to Revelation, the fourth chapter, you're going to see his purpose as to what is going to happen when he steps back. So now when he steps back now, these kingdoms, America, Britain, China, India, uh, France, Canada, uh, Russia, all these kingdoms, Germany, they're not just going to give up and lay down. They're going to go to fight. So that's therefore warfare has to come into place for a transition of state. And then from there, his kingdom is going to rule forever and ever and ever. For you to find that out, all you got to do is go to the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, and the 25th verse. It explains that. Okay, okay. So here's my fourth question. 
Who is the Christ, and what is the day of the Lord? Okay, so, so the Christ is of the tribe of Judah. He's a black man. Okay, like, like I said, if you go to Revelation, the first chapter, clearly describes him as being a black man, not a blue-eyed, blonde-haired, Caucasian. This is a Roman Catholic lie that was set up. The Roman Catholic lie is the mark of the Antichrist, or the mark of the beast. Because in Revelation, it tells you that Christ is black. So if you believe that Christ is white, you are anti-Christ. Right? So when he steps back now, that is going to be the, what is called the day of the Lord. So in the day of the Lord now, it shows you the warfare that is going to go down. Right now, we are in what's called the last days. Okay? We are in what's called the last days. So in the day of the Lord, the warfare is going to go down now where everybody's going to be fighting against each other, and that's where he's going to step back. And it's, that's going to be his day, because everybody's going to see him for exactly how the Bible says that he looks like. Everybody's not going to have no fantasy. Everybody's not going to, well, he could be Nelly colors or different colors, or he could be white, or he could be this, or he could be that. No. In the day of the Lord, he's going to come back in power. He's going to come back with angels. He's going to come back with the ships. He's going to come back with power. Wow. That's an amazing response. So here's my final question for you. Mm -hmm. Final one. When the change happens, what exactly shall happen in the kingdom? Wow. Now that's a great, super fantastic question. Number one, death and destruction is coming upon you. Millions and billions of people are going to die. Because bombs is going to be going off. Nuclear bombs is going to be going off. The angels is going to return. They're going to be killing people. That's why in Revelation, the 19th chapter, it says his garments shall run red with blood, okay? Because they're going to be killing people. Because people do not believe in Christ. People believe in religion. People, like millions of people believe in Islam, okay? Which is, they believe in a rock, okay? Allah and all these different things. People believe in Roman Catholicism. People believe in Confucianism. People believe in uh, Judaism. People believe in Krishna and all these different concepts. So the millions of people that believe all these multiple concepts, they're going to be terminated. Okay. Now, when they're terminated, the chosen of the Lord is going to be picked up. He's going to be coming with ships, which is the chariots, or as written all throughout the Bible. Okay, all throughout the Bible is written about the chariots of the Lord. Matter of fact, if you go to the book of Acts, the first chapter and the ninth verse, it tells you how Christ was picked up. It said a chariot picked him up. You understand? He was picked up in the cloud. He got risen, and that's how he's coming back. So warfare is coming upon him. Now, when the warfare is concluded, right, the chosen of the Lord, which is the Israelites, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, the 144,000, they're going to be picked up. He's going to clean the nation of Israel up, okay? And now he's going to put them back in Jerusalem, and they're going to rule the world with him for a thousand years. That's the thousand-year rule of Christ, spoken about in Revelation, the 20th chapter. Okay, they're going to rule for a thousand years, and they're going to teach the world. Also, they're going to be changed. The people that it makes it is going to be changed completely, mentally, spiritually, and physically. So the world is going to go into a peace state. Forever and ever and ever. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be no lies. There's going to be no hospitals. There's going to be no sicknesses. There's going to be no disease. There's going to be no police. You know what I'm saying? saying to beat you, all that's going to be terminated. All that's going to be terminated. So that is the stage. We're in the first stage right now. We're trying to get to the second stage, which is the righteous kingdom. And it's being called the Savior. That is also, let me say this. We're going to change. Right now we're mortal. So before I leave, death shall be conquered. Okay. So where we die right now, we can die from anything. Like if I take a knife and stab myself, I can die. We're going to not. We're not going to die now. We're going to become immortal. We're going to be able to live for thousands of years. So one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. One day. So if in that change, we'll be able to live ten thousand years and that'll only be 10 days so if we live 25 days we'll live 25,000 years we'll, and we'll be young we'll be living 25,000 years and we'll be young because the Lord has changed us mentally, spiritually and